Hey guys, um, I'm going to be doing mixing and producing tutorials, so I thought my first one should be about my template that I use. Now, I'm obviously using uh, Cubase version 10.5, but uh, this general template, you can set it up in the DAW of your choice. So I just happen to like Cubase. I've tried most of mostly everything else. I've worked on Pro, Pro Tools many years. Uh, I just, at the moment, I kind of like uh, Cubase and that's where it's at for me. Now, um, this is gonna be a general template that should work for most styles of music. With me in particular, I do a lot of things for film and TV. So I need a, a template that'll work with a lot of the pop, hip hop and R&B productions that I work with. So uh, let's just go th through uh, what I have on my template. And uh, yeah, it'll just give you a better idea. So the main thing that with me, um, I really focus on speed. I'm really, really impatient. And as soon as I start producing something, I have to finish it very quickly. And especially for TV, like it's not uncommon to completely record, produce, and mix a song in one to two hours. I've done it many times. A lot of those songs have ended up on TV shows like Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Storage Wars, things like that. So yeah, it took me a while to get to that level, but using a good template will get you 50% of the way there. So let's just go through what I have right now. Um, as you can see here, I have my virtual instruments on the top section. So, you know, I like speed, like I said. So I have like a bank of kicks. I have snares. I have claps you know, bank of hi-hats. So the main thing is that everything is at your fingertips. You know, percussion, crash, bass, basic piano. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's not going through. Um, you know, I got, and then synths, pads, whatever else. And then for my live recordings, uh, you know, me in particular, I use a lot of guitar sometimes, so I just have like a basic setup for guitar and vocals. Now, obviously, if I need anything else, any more tracks, the beauty of having a nice template with all my effects sends and everything set up is like if I, if I just need another guitar, I just go in and duplicate it. I set up a um, keyboard shortcut when I hit the, the D key it just duplicates it. And there we go, we have everything, you know, set up at your fingertips. So, uh, one thing I should add, um, all my drums, let me pull up the mixer, all my drums are being routed to a group track. This is very important to get a quick mixable sound right away. So all my drums, as you can see, the routing is going to a drum group track. And that's very easy in, in Cubase to set up. Um, you know, you just go to a project, add group. So I already did that and my drums are here. Now, What's very important for drums that a lot of people use is parallel compression. And parallel compression, just it just makes the drums a lot punchier, more in your face, and, and livelier. And this is the easiest way to set it up so that everything is just automatically done for you kind of thing. So to set up a basic uh, parallel compression track, I set up another group, another, an effects track actually. So you go to Project add effects 
and that's all you got to do and that is right here and what I did I personally use console one for the purpose of this tutorial I set up uh, just Steinberg's vintage compressor and I set up uh, you know the highest ratio and then you know you you play with your input and output so that you're getting a good sound so I'll just show you um, with a kick sound just like what it does to it right away so I got my kick and we're gonna shut that off so all my drums like I said they're going there now look at the difference with the parallel compression track with it it's just so much livelier and that uh, like I said it's automatically there now let's go back to this and let's show you what else I have set up so the next thing you need to do is set up effects sends because this will you know it it's really nice to have a, a big selection of effects at your fingertips so that you can take any track you like and run it through effects sends so on the first one i just have a general uh, sorry i don't know what's going on with this a hall so to set it up obviously you just go project add track effects effect and then you set up whatever plugins you use now the plugin it's it doesn't really matter what you have you can use a stock um, cubase plugin you know for this one i'm just using a uh, random hall from the uh, lexicon brand but really anything works so i have a hall I have a chorus, I have a tape delay because I, I just like tape delays. And then I have a plate, generally for drums, but it can be, it can work with anything else. And then a small room, a huge hall. And then I have a vocal plate, but this I obviously, I leave it reserved for anything vocal related. So if the song calls for a vocal plate, I will obviously use that. Uh, if it calls for a hall or a tight room, I will put just my dedicated vocal things on this track. Now, you might say, well, you know, if we have like a, you know, a jazz track, why wouldn't she just put the vocal and the piano with the same uh, reverb? Well, yes, you can do that. However, I like to put a pre-delay on my vocal um, and the reason for that is so that it doesn't, so that the vocal doesn't really get lost in the track. And I, I find a lot of not novice mixers, they just slap a uh, reverb, they like reverb, they, and they crank it. And the next thing you know, the, the voice is just being washed out in the track and it's a mess. Uh, this cures the problem by having it separate. And then you set up a pre-delay so that the reverb starts slightly after. And you have to time this with the track. I'll, I'll probably do another tutorial showing you exactly how to do this. But that's the whole, the whole reason why I have a separate one for that. And I like to have a separate vocal delay as well in case I want a brighter delay for the vocals and a darker delay for the instruments. So all these effects from the hall to the vocal delay, as you can see, they're all stereo. I also like mono effects so I set up personally uh, a spring mono left spring mono right and a delay mono left and a delay mono right so as you can see it's mono and it's hard pan left now you might say well why did you do that well in my style of mixing you know LCR mixing I like things wide I like things to breathe so let's just say give you an example here I'll 
take my piano. Let me just shut that off. And I will pan my piano to the right. And let me feel like there's no sound. I apologize, there's no sound going through right now, but basically what I do is, let's just say I take my piano, I pan it to the right, and then on my effect sense, I send it to the left spring. So basically what that does is, it just really opens up the sound. And uh, you get this huge, huge sound. So I, like I said, I like to, to have that at my fingertips at my disposal. So that's that with that. And then uh, the only other group tracks that I have is um, one for background vocals. Because generally, you know, if, if you're stacking a lot of background vocals, you don't want to EQ them separately and treat them separately. Uh, so I send it to a group and then obviously you EQ to taste and and do whatever you need to do there. So I think I covered uh, mostly everything of my general template. Now, like I said, oh, one other thing I should do, uh, this is just a quick mix tip, but everything, every single track that you have, except for the kick and the bass drum, you should put a high pass filter on. So as you can see here, because as you can see here, a low cut. I generally put it at around 80 or 90. There's, you know, anything around there, uh, it should be good enough to clean up the mix. So like I said, everything except the kick and the bass. So that automatically cleans up your mix, I would say, you're 30% closer to a good sounding mix just by doing that. And uh, that's about it. That's my basic um, mixing tutorial. So you always have to, I mean, I'm gonna be doing other mixing tutorials, explaining levels and things of that nature. But this is the basic template that I have. Um, I should add, just want to show you what I have on my master bus. So on the master bus, I have this particular plugin that right now, the only thing that is on is just the peak limiter, just to protect against. Uh, but when the song is uh, being mixed, a lot of guys actually mix through um, a stereo bus compressor. I don't. And I just find if you work harder, if the mix sounds good without the bus compressor, then you could turn it on afterwards and tweak it and it'll just sound better. So once my mix is ready to go, then yes, I turn on uh, the bus compressor on this. I put a clipper on and you know I fiddle with uh, getting more volume. And believe it or not, this, this plugin is really, really good for uh, just doing like a basic, very basic mastering job. And that's it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment down below and uh, I'll do my very best to answer it.